Hi, I'm Melanie Chacon with Tuila TV, and I'm here with Jane Autry. Jane, thanks for joining us again. Oh, you're welcome. Good to see you. So we've interviewed Jane once before at the Stansbury Art and Literary um, Open House. Um, and we're back here with Jane at her home studio. And can you tell us about what you're working on today? Yes, I'm just finishing a temple uh, the Snowflake Temple um, from Arizona. My ancestors are actually from Snowflake, Arizona, and so this has specific significance to me, and my sister lives down there. So, you know, we went down there to visit, and I went and did a photo shoot of the the Snowflake Temple, and this is actually my second Snowflake Temple painting. Um, I've got a really crazy wild sky that I had a lot of fun creating. Uh, the painting will be called stand ye in holy places and then over the top I have uh, put the drawing of the snowflake temple in black and white so I've painted it very carefully in black and white that's actually the hardest part and the most tedious now I'm to the fun part where I get to add color to the the black and white underpainting and that's what I'm going to be finishing up here really soon so you do the background first is that right yes I don't like to have to go back and forth and fix, although I still have to sometimes, but I love to get a really crazy wild sky, and that's my love, um, and tell a story with the sky, and then put that temple in front in very precise detail. That's awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about this background story? My husband and I talked about having a temple painting that is called Standy in Holy Places, and I immediately went, oh yeah, that's what I want to do. So I got the canvas, and I painted the whole thing orange, really bright, fiery orange, and, and then did several layers to build up billowy, scary, dark clouds with a little bit of light coming through so you could see the, so you could see what was happening. And then after that was all dry, then I um, put the drawing on top. I love that idea, and it's definitely showing through in your picture. So what are you going to do next? The next step is to add color, and I do that by glazing. So I take some, a product called Liquin, and I mix it with the paint, and it makes it transparent so that the shadows, the darks, the lights can come through. It's really subtle color. Um, <clears throat> this temple isn't pure white. It's got some really beautiful colored stones, and so I'm going to be adding those colors in, maybe adding some detail in the brick um, and so forth, but it still needs to be brilliant. The white will shine through, and it will glow with with color and it's I'm, I'm just so excited to finish it it's going to be really pretty I bet so we'll we'll get to your process in a minute you'll show us how you start it but I want to go back to how you named this stand ye in holy places so do you always name your paintings or kind of like make a story before you do them that's a really good question probably not necessarily um, some of my paintings begin with an idea like Stand Ye in Holy Places, but others I do the whole painting and then I figure out the name. So okay. it varies a lot. All right, Jane, so you're going to show us how you prep the sky first. for, And this is a fun background because sometimes you just do a normal cloud blue sky, right? Sometimes, yeah. I'm Like I said, I like to collaborate with the client and decide what they like. And so I'll do a real creative, funky background. And I've done all kinds of different ways. And, and, um, and then I'll do a traditional, pretty fluffy cloud sky. They usually choose the fluffy, fluffy cloud sky yeah. thing. But I have to experiment. I have to do these great backgrounds. And then, because a lot of times, even though I'm doing a painting for a client, mm -hmm. I'm also going to do a second painting for me to keep. Oh, Okay, so okay. the sky's where it begins. All right, and show us what you've got in this bucket. Okay, in this bucket, I have mixed some cobalt blue deep watercolor, and I've used a lot of it, and I mixed it with just a little bit of water, and then I've put a piece of lace in there and soaked it with the cobalt blue color. Okay. And then I'm going to lay it on the canvas. I buy watercolor cradled board canvases, which are a little different than what most watercolorists use, but I get, I love the texture of the watercolor background, and I've discovered that I don't like, some artists will glue fabric or lace on, on and create yeah. that part of the canvas, mm -hmm. but I find that that texture is really difficult to paint a nice clean temple on mm -hmm. with precise lines. It just, it's just too hard. Well, Jane, thanks so much for inviting us to your home studio and for allowing us to watch you in action and for showing us your work and your process. So just really quick for our viewers, because I'm sure they want to know and I want to know as well. If, um, 
anyone wants a portrait or a painting or even a temple, what would be the process for them to find you and go about that? It's real easy. Um, Google Jane Autry and you'll find me on Facebook um, and many other things. I have two websites, one for prints and one for original paintings. So it's really easy to find me and just message me on Facebook or um, call me. My phone number's out there. Okay. And um, we'll go from there. Thanks again for sharing your talent with us and for showing us how you work down here.